94 blue-white diamonds, flawlessly set in platinum. Value, 200 pounds. Well, you've heard the old saying, things are seldom what they seem, and skimmed milk masquerades as cream. Charlie, it's stunning. The Gillingham necklace, yeah, not bad. You have the real one to copy? No, worked from a photograph. Just how close is it? Well, any diamond man could spot it as a fake at once, and of course, Lord Gillingham. I don't put the hallmark inside the clasp. But mm. two foot away, you could fool all the people all the time. Is <laughs> your cufflinks? <laughs> They're perfect. What do you expect? Charlie Allows makes anything, it's always perfect. Oh, you're far too <laughs> modest. I shall wear them. By the way, who ordered the necklace? Why? Well, replicas of valuable necklaces give me ideas, such as fraud and grand larceny. Trouble with you, you've got a suspicious mind. Very. Now, Gillingham ordered it all right. He wrote me a letter, crest and all. And it's been picked up personally in a few minutes by Lord Gillingham's secretary. Slow down. Nervous? It's bad enough stealing the Gillingham necklace without being caught for speedy. Charlie, they're beautiful. I shall flourish them at every party. <laughs> Tell all your rich friends Charlie Allo's made them. I will. You send the bill to my house. Oh, forget it. Oh, I wouldn't hear of it, Charlie. I'll take them off, then. Oh, now, come on. Listen, it's a pleasure. I ain't got many friends, but one of them happens to be the famous Simon Templar. Summers, all ready for you. Just a slight adjustment to the class. It's very, very good. It's perfect. Is it? 200 pounds. I'll send the bill to Lord Gillingham. His lordship will pay cash this time. Cash? <laughs> sure you don't mind. But none of my clients ever pay cash. What are you doing? No offence, Miss Summers. I, I think I'll have a quick word with Lord Gillingham. He won't like to be disturbed. I won't keep him on. He's... he's out! No, I won't disturb him, will I? Three, two, one, two.
Look, stealing the necklace is one thing. Killing a man. Oh, shut up! Drop me here. For heaven's sake, keep your nerve. A fashion show in Gillingham House. Father must be spinning in his grave. Oh, come off it, Daddy. There are plenty of worse ways of earning money. Now, keep a list, darling. We may have to try them all. Okay. Where on earth have you been? I had dozens of things to it. This is looking nice. Are you all right? Yes, I'm just a little rushed. You look a bit ragged. Has the necklace arrived yet? The bank delivered it an hour ago. It's in the safe. Why should anybody commit murder for a fake necklace? Claude, dear boy, people commit murder for all sorts of stupid reasons. The letter from Lord Gillingham. Yes, sir. Someday, try buying your own. Very gracious. Very odd indeed. Claude, I tell you what, if I were you... You aren't, fortunately, for Scotland Yard. I'm only trying to help. I would rather be trampled to death by a bull elephant. Oh, well, that can be arranged. You know, uh... You're just plain cantankerous. You can go now. Try not to miss me too much. Inspector, he marked an item in the paper. One of the main social events of this week is the showing of Pierre's new collection at the elegant London home of Lord Gillingham this afternoon. Model Veronica Kieran will wear Pierre's supreme triumph, La Vie en Rose, and with it, the famous Gillingham necklace. It's revolting. Honestly, I could scream. What is it? If these gloves, look, they just don't match. Honestly, if I don't do everything myself, it all goes wrong. Well, you'll just have to make do, my dear. On you go. It's very pretty, then. Oh, Veronica, la vie en rose next. Oh, the necklace, Mary. We'll need the necklace. I'll get it, I'll get it. <laughs> Space age next, darling. Acapulco, a dashing resort coat in bold horizontal striped silk, aquamarine and white. It's double-breasted with casual pockets and worn with a white felt Stetson hat. They're ready. Oh, well, uh, shut the safe, will you, dear? Veronica? My nerves, they're absolutely screaming. Well, they would be. <laughs> You're so understanding. <laughs> Veronica! These girls. <laughs> oh, Angel, that is absolute bliss. Divine. Uh, the necklace, Lord Gillingham. Uh -huh. <sighs> Steal it? Do you seriously think they'll try? I'm sure of it. How? Remains to be seen. I, I, I think we'd better warn my father. Shirt waster. The understated elegance of a tailor dress, but in the grand manner. This is entirely covered in paillettes. Ecstasy, absolute ecstasy. Come on, Lord Veronica, wearing La Vie en Rose, the crowning achievement of Pierre's collection this season. Heavenly pink chiffon cascading from the tiny bodice of silk roses. And with it, Veronica is wearing the famous Gillingham necklace. 94 diamonds set in platinum. It was presented to Catherine the Great of Russia by her lover, Grigory Orlov, in 1767. It passed into the Gillingham family in 1850. It is conservatively valued at one hundred thousand pounds. Where's the trousers, suit? The green sequins come along. Oh. Yeah. You see, Simon, you're an alarmist. <laughs> but do me a favor. Take a good look at it. Oh, the hallmark. Oh, Daddy. It's not there. Oh, it must be. Don't brush off. What is this? 
It's a fake. It can't be. I swear this is a different necklace to the one I put on this child a minute ago. Turkish Delight, a delicious confection for formal occasions. The line is utterly simple, but this dress is blazing with color. And note the sleeves, which are encrusted with embroidery in an intriguing Turkish design. Are you trying to say I'm a thief? We're just asking you some questions, young lady. Now, look, men are not allowed back here. Yes, Claude, I do think... Be we... quiet. Gold stockings, are you mad? Show me exactly what you did. You walked over there. After Lord Gillingham put on the necklace. Oh, Claude, wait. You open your mouth once more and I'll arrest you for impeding a police investigation. And now, Celeste, wearing turquoise cloud. <laughs> Let me get this straight, Inspector. You say that Charlie Hallows claims that I ordered this replica? That's what he told Templar. By letter. You also said your secretary was picking it up in a few minutes. That I was, but I, I was nowhere near Hatton Garden this morning. Where were you? Well, I'd, I'd have to make a list of everything I did. I, I went to several shops in Regent Street and Knightsbridge. There were lots of uh, niggling little things to get for the show. I might add, Inspector, that uh, Miss Summers has been with me for ten years. Her integrity goes without saying. I see. Thank you, Lord Gillingham. Claude, I have an idea. Indeed. Excuse me. Here, just a minute. This is the fake, remember? Oh, yes. Now, with your permission, I would like to reenact the crime. Coming? I'll be the laughing stock of London. Would you believe it? Lipstick on tropical night? Won't it clean? I've got a showing in Paris tomorrow. Man can only take so much. You. You've ruined my show. I'm sorry about that, Sonny. And don't call me Sonny. You. You oaf. If I were you, lad, I'd stick to Miss Sewing and keep a civil tongue in my head. Right, Claude, would you uh, go out on the platform, please? You wait here. Right, sir. All right. Claude, can you hear me? Of course I can. You think I'm dead? Good. Well, I'm going to start counting the minute Veronica gets out of our line of sight. You yell the second you see her. One. Two, three, four, now! Well, Claude, that only took four seconds. Why are you trying to say I got the real necklace off and put this one on in four seconds? You've got to watch, Claude. Time me. Go ahead. Seven seconds. And you could see. That's true. And what am I supposed to have done with the real one? You searched me and found nothing. Maybe you think I've swallowed it or something. You see, Claude, it is impossible. This dress happens to be the gem of my collection. Would anybody mind if Veronica takes it off? Go on. Thank you. You're absolutely sure the real necklace was used? I'm positive. Mary saw me getting it out of the safe. Baffling, isn't it, Claude? There's some perfectly simple explanation. Well, have you got it? I'll get it. Let's go back to the study and do a little thinking. It does help. Lord Gillingham. OK, just a moment. I'll uh, leave you to discuss the uh, finances with Pierre. Of course, Lord Gillingham. <laughs> How was I? Shut up, you fool. Do you want to ruin everything? I go home. Well, it all went very well. Except for Charlie Hallows. Oh, relax. <laughs> all that means is that you won't be able to join me for a couple of weeks, that's all. A couple of weeks? Well, if you leave Gillingham too soon, you'll get suspicious. But you said I could... Now, you're not going to argue, are you? Well, here, you tell me I... Darling, look, don't ever take this mad dress designer act of mine for real. Oh, I, I know it isn't. That's right. You do, don't you?
Hi. Hello. May I come in? What for? Oh, a little talk. What about? Anything you like. Uh, laws to stop careless skiing. Just exactly what you want. I like models. Amazing. Who thought it up? Not you, surely. Thought what up? Oh, now, come on off it, darling. I figured it out. The only possible way it could have been done. Will you come out, or shall I come in and get you? Come over near your sister. Amazing the tricks nature plays. You're Veronica. No, I'm Valerie. Ah, so Lord Gillingham put the necklace on you, and in that fatal few seconds, your twin, who was hidden between a layer of curtains, stepped out wearing the fake, which means that Pierre is our man. How do you figure that out? Well, somebody had to make identical dresses of an exclusive model. Why don't you sit down? Nature's bookends. Be confusing for them in prison. In prison? You wouldn't. Well, I suppose they could put you in different cell blocks. Mr. Templer, please. Oh, it won't be so bad. Time off good behavior. Well, you'll be out in ten years. Oh, Mr. Templer, oh, please, we'll do anything. Anything. Anything? Well, that'd be different. But before I ask for the supreme sacrifice, why don't you talk? I threw a coat on over the dress. She slipped out the back way. There was a man waiting in a car. He drove her home. I gave him the necklace. And uh, what did he give you? A thousand pounds. And Pierre? In Paris. Where in Paris? I don't know. Neither do I. Oh, maybe a little chat with the police will jog your memories? He made a phone call from here once. That's right, to a man called Nicholas. At a nightclub. What was the name of it? A French name. In Paris, that is on. L'Auberge d'Or. That's it. L'Auberge d'Or. Well, that doesn't exactly close the case, but at least it's a start. Then you won't get us arrested. Well, let's put it this way. The police have made it very clear they don't need my help. Then we can relax. And that depends. On, on what? what? On whether I recover the Gillingham necklace and find Charlie Hallow's killer. Ladies. Difficulties? Does it matter? Not to me. I was merely being polite. An art you should strive to master. Were there difficulties? No. Uh, you're a compulsive liar. Let's cut the compliments and get on with the business in hand, shall we? Certainly. Excuse me. Absolutely superb. You can pay now, you can admire it later. Why are you being so disagreeable? Or did something serious go wrong? No, nothing went wrong. Went like a charm. Switch on the lamp. Congratulations. Thank you. On your highly developed sense of humor. What do you mean? This is a fake. Don't be funny. See for yourself. The setting is platinum. A night for pieces of beautifully cut crystal. In other words, glass. Simon Templer is here. Huh? Well, say I'm busy. Oh, Daddy, please. We can't just brush him off. Besides, he is trying to help us. Oh, things have changed. I yeah. know. Oh, but please, just see him for a minute. Oh, all right. Bring him in. Come in, Simon. Thank you, Mary. 
Morning, Lord Gillingham. Uh, Templar. Am I wrong, or is there a certain tension in the atmosphere? Yes, I'm afraid there is. You won't approve of what I'm going to do. Try me. I had a phone call from Brussels last night. They'll, uh, they'll sell me back the necklace. For £10,000. Well, now, that's very generous of them. They evidently realise it's not an easy thing to dispose of. This is to be, I take it, a cash-on-delivery deal? It has to be cash. A sterling transfer through official channels would take weeks. And they want the money tomorrow. Brussels. Very odd. Why? You uh, lugged the cash out of the country in this. Is that the idea? I'm afraid that's my affair. Well, then, by no means let me interfere. Remember Charlie Hallow's murder. Good luck. I think you'll need it. I hate letting you do this, Mary. There's a certain amount of risk, you know. I'll be careful, and I'm glad I'm doing it. Hmm. Oh, Kate, uh, did you get Mary's ticket? Yes. We'll leave Victoria at 9 o'clock tonight. You must think I might go by train. <laughs> Lots of people do. No, it's just that I hate flying. Uh, what did Mr. Templer want? Oh, nothing important. Now, go over my instructions again. Well, you arrive in Brussels, mm -hmm. check in at the Atlantic Hotel. I've made a reservation for you. A man will call to see you sometime tomorrow morning. Don't ask any questions. Just give him the briefcase. He'll go away, take the money out, put the necklace in, return the uh, briefcase, and you bring it back to London with you as quickly as you can. Oh, well, it sounds simple enough. Well, with the currency restrictions, it was the only way to work it. There. Now, let's have our tea, OK? I'll be along in a minute. I have some things to do. I want Paris, O double three, eight four, double O, please. Greetings. All part of the British Railway's superb service. How did you know I was on this train? I have spies everywhere. Oh, really? Yeah. No, thank you. Oh, what's the matter? Don't you trust me? I hadn't really thought about it. Well, try thinking about it now. No. Well, I figured you needed a bodyguard. Why? Come on, drink up. Why do I need a bodyguard? Well, surely it's obvious. Pretty girl traveling alone on a train with 10,000 pounds in cash. To a safe journey. Yeah, we uh, lose the dining car at Dover. We might as well have some supper. I'd love to. Uh -uh, you're forgetting something. Templar. You reserve table 12, I believe. That's right. Here, uh, allow me. Lovely, Simon. Thank you. 
My pleasure. All set? Mm. Convenient, isn't it? Oh, you think so? Yes, well, you can keep your side locked. If you need me, just open the door and shout. I don't think that'll be necessary. You can never tell. Good night, Mary. Yes. The major of the darling car fan is under your table. Sir. Thank you. Do come in. Uh, yes, sir. Shut the door. I'd like a word. Yes, sir. Now, we uh, get to Dover at 10.30 p.m., oh, right? Sir. Uh, yes, sir. And uh, Dunkirk at 4.20 a.m.? That's correct, sir. Well, what time do we leave Dunkirk? Well, it takes about 20 minutes to get the train off the ferry, sir. Oh, good. Well, the moment the train is on the ferry at Dover, I want you to lock this door from the outside. You mean lock you in, sir? No, no, no. I'm getting off at Dover and back on again at Dunkirk. You're getting off at Dover, sir? Yes. And back on again at Dunkirk? Yes, you've got it. No, 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 no sir. I, I haven't. Well, why not? Well, I, it's none of my business, sir, but I'd very much like to know how you figure you're going to get from Dover to Dunkirk. Forty miles of open water, sir. Well, it's very simple. I, I walk on it. He walks on it? Of course. How else? ETA Brussels. Oh, 1 a.m. Yes, well, I shouldn't need more than an hour and a half. You're ready to take off again at 2. <laughs> well, you hired the aeroplane. That's right. Mr. Templer, I know it's none of my business, but I can't quite... Why I get off a train in Dover that's going to Brussels, charter a plane to fly to Brussels, then fly back to Dunkirk and get on a train that's going to Brussels. Well, it is a bit confusing. Not to me. Templar. Simon, come in. It's been a long time, Simon. I'm glad to see you. Oh, thank you, Ben. It's mutual. But why do you wake me up in the middle of the night? The Gillingham necklace. The Gillingham necklace? I do not understand. Oh, come off it, Ben. The moment I heard Brussels, I knew it was you. You are buying it, aren't you? I am. From whom? Uh, from Gillingham. Who else? Okay, give. For you, Simon, I will be truthful. Good. Then you know about the robbery. Yes. I also know Lord Gillingham has been for many years playing a harmless joke. <laughs> he has made from the necklace a most beautiful replica. When? Oh, some time ago, before the war. <laughs> well, that figures. Two replicas. Two? I know only of one. Go on. Well, Lord Gillingham, he sees in this the opportunity of a lifetime. Officially, the necklace has been stolen. But that is the fake one, you understand? Mm. The real one's in a safety deposit box. Just so. And Lord Gillingham called you from London. <laughs> he says he is ready to sell. Bien, I am ready to buy. His daughter, she arrived with a briefcase at the Hotel Atlantic in the morning. I collect the briefcase, take out the necklace, Put in the money, a return briefcase. Finny? Mm. And lucky Lord Gillingham gets paid twice. Once by you, once by the insurance company. Yeah, insurance companies make too much money. 
Well, they won't make much money out of this little deal, will they? Exactly what are you telling? Ben, if I were you, I'd uh, plan on sleeping in late this morning. You mean I am not buying the Gillingham necklace? It's not for sale. As a matter of interest, Mr. Templer, how was your crossing? Oh, I didn't even get my feet wet. Thank you very much, sir. Steward in here. Oh, Stuart, yes, I wonder sir. if I could ask you something. Yes, sir. I... on this train? Is he? Where is he? He can't be. Check the car is on the toilets at each end. <laughs> this one's sound out of you, darling. Just one. Come on. For heaven's sake, we're nearly at the bridge. Get the necklace. Don't. There's been a switch. This isn't Gillingham's case. Try this one. Crowded, isn't it? In here. Is it there? 
Obviously, you have failed again. Chillingham can have his choice. A necklace or his daughter. They didn't call you in London? They may have done by now. <laughs> no, thanks. No. Right after I talked to you, I, I caught the next train. See what happens when you're greedy. Well, if this is all your fault, if you hadn't switched briefcases, they wouldn't have taken Mary. Well, it would have helped if you had told the truth. You were so busy trying to fiddle the insurance company as well as collect from Ben Mercy, you couldn't think straight. Hmm. Simon, I... I must get Mary back. I'd, I'd do anything, give anything. Give anything, eh? All right, then I'll give them the necklace. You have it? Of course. Simon, I... I don't, don't deserve your help. That's right, you don't. But I've seen Charlie Hallow's killers once. I would like to see them again. You can find them? I think so. Where do you start? With a man called Nicholas, at a nightclub. L'Auberge d'Or. Oh, don't walk away, for you're not you will always be. My love for all eternity, without you need. Is Nicholas here tonight? You are a friend? A cousin. It is his habit to call for Michel about midnight. Michel? That you will always be my love for all eternity. do for you. I am the emissary of the Sheikh Ibn Alek Ben Musef. The Sheikh is most disturbed. Et alors? Sheikh? Sheikh who? Ibn Alek Ben Musef. I am the conveyor of the Sheikh's humble wishes that you take supper with him. This Sheikh? Oil? Oil? Oh, dis donc. Oceans of it. Eh, hey, dis donc. Please, sit down. Oh, you are most kind. He perhaps, he perhaps looks like you. I am but a pale shadow of his beauty. I have, unfortunately, another engagement. Well, then, break it. Eh bien, I've tried almost everything. Now perhaps I add a shake to the list. But why not? René, please call Nicolas and tell him I will be late. The number is Fontainebleau, 3157. Now, this shake, where is he? Ah, I've just remembered something. I promised his mother I would have him home early. His mother? He is only four years old. Oh! 
Going somewhere, Tendler? Apparently. Ah. Too bad about Charlie Ellis. It had to be done. His uh, funeral's Tuesday. I don't suppose you'll be there. You won't be either. That's a pity. I sort of hate missing paying my last respects to Charlie. You can't have everything in this life. <laughs> Shalom. May I have a lift? I, I thought the others were driving you. Oh, well, they didn't carry enough insurance. Insurance? Ah, uh, Mr. Templin. I've been looking forward enormously to meeting you. Why? Feel the same way. Where are the others? They were delayed. And Michelle brought them. You have the Gillingham necklace? Yes, I do. I want it. And you shall have it. In exchange for Mary Gillingham. We'll be delighted to get rid of her. No, I'm sure she feels the same way. Probably. Where do we make the exchange? Oh, what about the club after Michelle's last show? I'll be there. With Mary? Of course. Good. Oh, just uh, one other thing. The replica. <laughs> it's of no value. They're not even worth locking. Yes, but uh, Lord Gillingham has a sentimental attachment to it. <laughs> <laughs> you shall have it. Well, that's it then, isn't it? Mary and the replica in exchange for the real one. Agreed, sure not. Thanks for the hospitality. Jake would have liked to have been here in person to put this on, but for reasons I'm sure you understand, he just couldn't be here. There we are, isn't that magnificent? Oh, c'est formidable. Be a replica. Ready, Mary? 
sorry to break up the party, but I'm sure you understand. Yes, of course. And it's been a pleasure. I really mean that. Oh, my cigar. Absolutely beautiful. It looks well on me, yes? Yes, Sherry. Take it off. Oh, no, Nicholas. Not yet. No. Oh. But this is the real one. What? That's right. You'll be glad to know that Charlie's killers have been arrested. And when you notify the insurance company, tell them I got it back and that I'd like a small fee. Say 10%. A saintly commission. <laughs>